songs. I was going to try to do it in one message, and I made it through three verses, so we're going to try again. The only bad thing is that there's 16 verses to the chapter, so we may not make it through today either, but we're going to try. We're going to see what God has to tell us. If you've never read Psalm 91, then you're missing out on a, a scripture that will give you encouragement, that will give you strength, that will guide you through life. And I don't know about y'all, but that's the kind of stuff I need in my life. I need strength to live each day. I need, I need protection from the world and from the, the leader of this world who is known as Satan. He's always got his snares out wanting to attack us. So we're going to, if you have your Bible, let's turn to Psalm 91. We made it through the first three verses uh, last Sunday. But we're going to continue on. But I'm going to start back in verse 1. And uh, we'll just go through what it says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I am He. Hallelujah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand by thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling. And we'll stop right there because I doubt I'll make it that far. So we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you again for this day. Lord, I just thank you for the video and all the thoughts and well wishes. Lord, we just lift up not only Jacob, but all the others who are going back to college, especially Madison and Mac and, um, and, and Holly and all the Lord, whose names may escape us, Lord, you know who they are. We just lift them up to you, Father. I pray that you would be with us today during this service. I pray that you would speak through me, communicate your will and your way through me, Lord. And I just pray that you will just send your Holy Spirit here today to open up hearts, eyes, and ears to receive the message, Lord. Father, we just thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, I, I love verse 4. Uh, it says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. And when I read that, the first thing that happened to me is I was whisked away in time back to uh, my childhood when I was about three or four. One of my earliest lessons that I learned, uh, I, the first thing I learned is how much I love baby chickens. And then the second thing I learned is how much the mama hen loved baby chickens. And so when, you know, as a little kid, I'm growing up on a farm, there's baby chickens everywhere. So I said, Rob, well, that's they're my pets. I'm gonna play for baby chickens. So I was running catch one and I just plopped down there and I was holding him in my hands, and listening to him chirp. And I noticed the mama hen was acting a little funny over there. She done dropped her wings down like this right here, and she was looking at me. Yeah, I didn't pay no attention to it. Next thing I know, she got a little closer, and uh, I, I didn't pay no attention. Next thing I know, she's all up in my face, clawing feathers flying, and after that little baby chicken, I dropped him and took off running. And I learned the love of a mama hen. She loved that little chicken, and she would lay down her life for that chicken, and this is the illustration that God uses in the Bible. God is just like that mama hen. He's protective over his people. He's protective over you and me. And when the enemy comes and tries to take us away, it ruffles his feathers. And he don't like it. Okay? And so he's our protection. There's no better place to be than under the wings of a mama hen. Or in our case, under the wings of God Almighty. His wings are much 
stronger than a mama hen. His love for us is even stronger than the mama hen's love for her, her little babies. And it says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. You know, that's, that is a true saying right there. You can trust God's protection. Now, there's a lot of protection that you can get here on earth. And, you know, I'm a, a, my number one, uh, I guess my number one choice for protection, earthly protection, would be a gun. Or many, many guns. And then, I guess my second choice, yeah, I figured I'd get more in here. Then my second choice after guns for earthly personal protection would be knives, big knives. And then after big knives, medium-sized knives. And after medium-sized knives, small knives. You mean like machetes? Well, yeah, I got one. I got I got a machete. Uh, and it'll reach out and touch somebody. But you know, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, you know, all of that earthly protection is good, but it pales in comparison to our heavenly protection. Because you know what? If you stay on the path that God has you on, it's very unlikely that you're even going to need a gun. Because He's going to keep you out of places where you would need a gun. And He's going to protect you from situations coming to you in which you might need to protect yourself. And so God is the ultimate protection. But in order to really walk in His protection, then we have to walk in His ways. We have to follow, uh, you know, what the Bible says. And, and if we do that, it's automatic protection. And we don't even think about it that way a lot of times. But if you notice, godly people, people who are dedicated to the Lord, they very seldom get into trouble where they need to shoot somebody or stab somebody because God is protecting them the whole time. Now, I'm sure there's been some cases where somebody had to, a Christian had to defend their lives, but it's few and far between. For the most part, God is your protection. And if you just rest and trust that protection, you know, the little baby chicken, they trust that mama with everything. They, they don't even, they don't understand. It's just instinct that they trust. And that's the way it ought to be for humans. It ought to be our natural instinct to just trust God for his protection. But since we have this flesh upon us, then our instincts get smothered out by the flesh. So we have to discipline ourselves to trust in God's protection. Okay? And so, so many other times we want to reach for other protection when what we need to do is first seek out God and live according to his will and his way and your protection will be trustworthy, just like he is trustworthy. And he says, not only in verse, verse 4 says, uh, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And, and you know where you can find truth? There's only one place to find truth. It's right here. The Bible is truth. It's the source of truth. And it says here that... Um, he shall deliver thee from the snare, and he shall cover thee, and uh, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So basically, here's a picture. This, uh, for instance, this word shield in the Hebrew, you, when you think of shield, you just think of like uh, all these old movies that you see with them fighting. They have the shield on their own, little round shield. But that's not the type of shield that the psalmist is talking about here. This shield that they're talking about is a body shield. It's the whole length of a, of a body. So it doesn't just protect your arm. It protects your whole body. And these type of shields were used when they were trying to break into a fortress. And it would be like people up there in the balcony shooting at us down here. And you have them long shields to protect your whole body. And you know, when God shields you from something, He don't just shield an arm or a leg or a head. He shields your whole body. He shields you completely. And I think that is why the psalmist used this word uh, for shield. It's not a little shield. You are completely shielded by the Holy Ghost right here, right now. There's a hedge of protection around God's people. And that's a gift from God. He loves you so much. He puts that hedge of protection around you. And it's like a shield that quenches the fiery darts of that evil one. Yes, Lord, it says, He shall cover thee, and His truth shall be thy shield. So, so, but what is it 
what is the correlation between this long shield and the truth? The Bible says the shield that shields your whole body is not made out of wood. It's not made out of brass. It's not made out of steel. It's not made out of Kevlar, which that would be a good choice. But what is it made out of? This shield that protects us is made out of truth. Okay? We have a shield that is comprised of truth. So the truth is what shields us. And so many times we drop our shields and just let the enemy have our. Can you imagine if those people, those kind of folks in the balcony were raining down arrows at us trying to kill us? We'd have them shields up and we'd be all covered up but as good as we could. But yet God has given us this shield of truth around us. But so many times we drop it and become defenseless. You need to pick up your shield of truth. The truth is that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That is what my shield is made out of. That saying, that promise is my protection. That promise is my shield. That he will never leave me, never forsake me. That is my shield. And if I let go of those promises, I'm dropping my shield and I become defenseless. So I'm telling you this morning, pick up your shield. All of God's promises are like a shield that protects us from the enemy. Those promises that say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. That's my protection. Hey, I may not look like much, but the one that's in me is something. The one that's in me can shield me and protect me from this world and give me what I need to have victory. Is there anybody that needs victory this morning? I need some victory in my life. And if you need victory, we need to pick up that shield. It's right here. It's true. It's the truth of God's word. There's a whole lot more truth. Matter of fact, God's got 1,500 plus shields in his Bible. Because what is a shield? It's the truth. It's a promise. There are 1,500 plus promises in the Bible and every one of them acts like a shield to cover you. Somebody tell me another shield. I know somebody's got some good ones. Can y'all think of a good one? Fortress. Yeah, he's a fortress. He is our fortress and, and he is, he's my rock. You know, he is the firm foundation that I stand on. You can't protect yourself when you're running in the mud. I need to be on the solid rock so I can stand there and have my shield in my hand. This truth that God loves me. Greater love, this is a shield right here. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his brother. That's a, that's a, a shield that protects you from this world because it's a promise from God. Yes, Lord, he's promised that neither height nor depth nor principality or power, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's my shield that protects me. So anytime you're feeling attacked, turn to those promises in the Bible and say, hey, devil, I'm not going to take it. Here's my shield because my Father loves me and he gave me this shield to protect me. Yes, it says his truth. It says he shall cover thee with his feathers under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And um, as I said, this is a, a complete shield of God's truth. You know, if you walk in the truth, there's nothing that can get you. You know, there's so many politicians, they, they start out good and, and they, they get high up on the ladder of politics. But a lot of times somebody's digging in the old closet looking for bones back there. And the next thing you know, they come out with a whole skeleton. And look what I found. But you know, a man that walks in the truth, it's hard to find skeletons in the closet of a man who is shielded by God's truth. If you walk in God's ways, your closet is going to be clean. And that thing I'm not saying, so let me just back up there. I'm not saying you got to be perfect, but what I am saying is if you try your best to live your life for God, God counts that as perfect. Yes. As long as you ask Him to forgive you for your mistakes and for your sins, and as long as you repent, which means that when you do something that makes 
God and happy, it, it's like you're saying, God, I know I messed up, and I, I accept that responsibility. I ask you to forgive me, but not only that, that's only part of it. Not only do I ask you to forgive me, God, but I, I'm going to turn from that. And I'm not going to do it. I'm going to forsake that sin. I'm going to try my best not to do that anymore. Now, and, and so you're forgiven and, and you've repented and, and you've forsaken that sin. So what happens if you do it again? <laughs> well, that's very unfortunate. But you know what? My God don't never run out of forgiveness. He never runs out of forgiveness. But don't use forgiveness as a crutch to keep sinning like you're sinning. Now, you've got to forsake it. And, and if it comes to a point where you say, Lord, I, I keep asking for forgiveness for this sin. I keep forsaking it, but I keep picking it back up. I just don't have it in me to be able to defeat this. Why don't you say this? Lord, I know I don't have it in me to attain the victory. But I know you have it in you to give me the victory. And you walk in that victory and you can overcome any obstacle in your life. You believe it, church? Yes, Lord. I believe it too. Sometimes we, we just got to give it over to God and say, God, the want to is there. I want to forsake it, but I just don't have the strength. So that's where you need to come in, Lord. Uh, one of my professors in Liberty, his famous saying was, you do everything you can do, and then depend on God to do the things that only He can do. And I, that's words to live by right there. Yes, Lord, verse 5 says, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Now, this word, verse 5, is really, uh, it's really for the, the children who are going away to college. It's for the parents who are staying here. You know, obviously it's on my mind. How could it not be? But this is a comforting verse right here. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror. Now, this word terror, we, when we think of terror, well, when I think of terror, first thing I think about is like a horror movie, like Friday the 13th, or I don't even watch that in a long time. I, I know mean, Jason, he was, a, he was a bad, bad guy. He would strike terror into you. But see, this word uh, terror in Hebrew is not really that type of terror. This is more of, um, I've talked about it before, you know how like on a, uh, you're going for tests on the doctor's office, and he said, yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll call you when the tests come back. And then uh, he calls you at like 4.59 on Friday, and he, he, as soon as you pick it up, he's already hung up. <laughs> and then you, get, or you get a voicemail, and he says, we've got the results of your test back, so call me just as soon as possible so we can give you the results. And this is Friday at 5 o'clock, and you got to wait till Monday and think about them test all weekend long. That, that's the terror. That's what this word terror is. So it's not really fear, but what is it? I mean, how do you describe that? It's like anxiety. It's like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you get in trouble at school on Friday, and then you got to, you know, you got rode up, and you know you're going to go to the office on Monday, and you think about how the principal's going to whip you and paddle you. Well, I guess that's what I was thinking, I guess. They probably don't do that stuff no more, unfortunately. Yeah, time has been, they put you in a time hour or something. I don't know what they do with that. And they need to get the paddles back out. That's what they need to do. Yeah. I said that all week and think about how many lifts. I said, I bet it's going to be five lifts on my butt. I bet I'm going to bend over and grab my ankles. And I bet he's going to use that paddle with the duct tape and the holes drilled in it for better aerodynamics. And you know, just thinking about that, that's what the psalmist is talking about. And then, you know what? If you get the doctor's results on Monday, he said, it's great, everything's good. And you get to the principal's office on Monday, he's like, I'm going to let you off for a morning this time. Don't do it in the morning. Like, Praise God, hallelujah. Why did I do that to myself all weekend? And that's what the psalmist is feeling now. You know, so many times thinking about it is so much worse than actually doing it. And so that's what the psalmist is saying. Don't let the enemy play with your mind. Because that is the enemy. He gets in your mind and says, you know you're dying, right? You know you are a dead man walking. That headache you had, that's a brain tumor. 
if that ain't good enough, let me tell you, God has a special protection for His children. He knows who His people are, and He is going to protect them even more. He says it may be 10,000 fall over here, 20,000 over there, but it's not going to come near to me. And when I need something that's going to comfort me, I'm going to turn to that verse because it is my shield and it is my truth. It is my protection. And that's what I'm going to rely on when those fiery darts of Satan come. Those little darts that come and say, you know you're going to die. It's going to get you. I'm going to say, Satan, you listen to this right here. My Bible tells me 10,000 may fall in my right hand, but it shall not come nigh to me. And I'm claiming that promise. I don't know about y'all. I'm claiming it. I'm not going to be ignorant and, and go have a, a, a corona party. But uh, I'm going to do my best to stay healthy. And I'm going to rely on God to protect me. Then he says here, only with thine eyes shall thou see and behold the reward of the wicked. And he said, this, the only as close as this is going to come to you is with your eyes that you can see it. Because yes. God wants you to see it, and he wants the rest of the world to see this. Just like when, uh, in the book of Exodus, when Pharaoh and the Hebrew people, God used a pandemic to get through to Pharaoh. I believe God is using this pandemic to get through to a whole lot of people today. Yes. And you know, this pandemic has been a good thing in many ways, and we don't even want to think about it, but it has been. Think about all the people that got scared to death that Jesus was coming back and they got saved. Hallelujah. You know, praise God. If that's what it takes to get you right with the Lord, that's fine. Christy said that's the way the Pentecostals do it anyway. They scare you into heaven. So whatever it takes. <laughs> I don't want to scare you into heaven, but if, you get, if you're scared and you want some protection, I can give it to you. Not me, but I can show you the one that's got it, and it's Jesus. And so, so many people have come seeking the Lord, and so many people are more curious about where, I don't know how many people have asked me, Charlie, are we in the end times? I'm like, heck yeah, what do you think? And, you know, if that, if, if it was only that, it would be huge. But people are wondering, is this uh, part of the end times? And, and is Jesus coming back? So it's making people think about this. And it's making them question, wow, if, if these are signs and it's coming from God, that means that the Bible is real. Amen. And all these sins I've been doing are not pleasing to God. And if he comes back, and I'm not saved, then that means I'm probably going to hell. So then the gears start turning, and people are like, you know what? I don't want no part of that. I want Jesus. And I'm like, hallelujah, me too. So it, it's been a good thing. It's been a good thing at, at many. But see, God wants everybody to see it with their eyes, whether you're saved or unsaved. He wants you to see the effects of, of protection versus unprotection. He wants you to see the difference between how a saved person acts and how a lost person acts. You see, a saved person has has something within them that that keeps them sane. I guess you would say. You know, people people who are saved have a, a something on the inside that that keeps them going, that keeps them walking, keeps them talking. Whereas somebody who may not know the Lord would just quit. And give up. And, and so many people have done that. They just quit and give up and fall in, into a state of depression where they don't even want to leave their house because they're scared and, and, and they, they have all these anxieties. And you know what would be good for them is just to come to church and get into fellowship yes. with people. It's a proven fact that people that go to church live longer than those who don't. So, I mean, that alone is worth coming to church for. I mean, I want to come. I, I love coming to church, you know, but the fact that me going to church is going to help me live longer, hallelujah. I'm happy about that. And so it's a win-win. Even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of your anxiety, you know, you may have a, a pandemic that's a health problem. You may
may have a pandemic that's a financial problem. You may have a, a pandemic that's a family problem. I don't care what your pandemic is. I know where you can find protection. And no other name is protection found except Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's given us a shield of protection. Not just for one part of the body. It's a long shield that protects the whole person. Your body, your soul, and your spirit. And that shield is made up of truth. You need to search out that truth for yourself this week. I would encourage each and every one of you to explore some of the promises found in the Bible and make your own shield made out of God's truth. Get you about ten of those promises and, and you have them in front of you. And that's your shield right there. Every time anxiety comes on, every time depression comes on, every time an attack of the enemy comes on, you get out your shield. It may look like just a piece of paper to the world, but you say, hey, devil, this is my shield right here. And I'm going to live by this shield for my protection. And I guarantee God will deliver. He will give you not only protection, but more importantly for some people, he'll give you that sense, that feeling of peace and protection that only he can give. You know, I don't care if you got a hundred guns in your house ready to rock and roll at any time. Yep. If you don't have the peace of God and the protection of God there, primary, then you don't have anything. So I just pray this week y'all will work on those shields and uh, and bring them back and show them to you next week. I want to see some of the shields that we make. I'd be interested to see what verses y'all come up with. It's 1,500 of them, so I don't think we're going to run out of them no time soon. So I just, uh, I just pray that we will all just walk in the victory that the Lord has for us. And I'm going to close in prayer. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for that shield of protection that you give us, Lord. Help us to to incorporate that shield into our lives every single day, Lord. Help us to, to formulate our own shield by scouring the Bible and picking out those promises that, that we can lean on when times get tough, Lord. I just thank you for everybody that's here today. I pray that you will uh, be with us as we take the youth out for pizza, Lord. I just pray now that you would bless the food to nourish our bodies and our bodies in service to you, Lord. I pray that Everybody that's here now will uh, be blessed and have a great week and that you'll get us all back here at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.